You turn around. Do not look back. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 horror movies that left out the real horrific ending. Not in my movie. For this list, we'll be looking at scary movies either based on or inspired by true events that omitted key details that would have left the viewer on an even bigger downer. Since we'll be discussing the endings to these movies, here is your spoiler warning. Any other horror movies you know based on true stories? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, The Hills Have Eyes. No, there's never been a family of cannibals that hid out in the Nevada desert and ambushed unsuspecting travelers. At least, we don't think so. But writer-director of The Hills Have Eyes, Wes Craven, did lift a lot of the story from the legend of Sawney Bean. Anyone making a successful career as a bandit would be no stranger to fighting and killing for their loot. And Sonny threw himself wholeheartedly into the business of indiscriminate murder. According to folklore, Bean was a cannibal in the 16th or 17th century Scotland who took up residency with his wife Agnes in a clandestine cave. Over time, the two purportedly produced over three dozen children and grandchildren, all of whom would take to the roads at night and prey upon passers-by. I'll eat the heart of your stinking memory. I'll eat the brains of your kids, kids! Though many doubt the beans existed, we don't think the Jupiter clan in the movie ate upwards of 1,000 people like the beans supposedly did. Baby fat. You fat. Fat juicy. Number 9. The Haunting in Connecticut. For anyone that loves Ed and Lorraine Warren's exploits in the Conjuring movies, let us put a damper on things. Though the paranormal investigators don't appear in this movie, they did investigate the reportedly haunted former mortuary in real life, giving it the old stamp of approval after they exercised the supernatural entities. Maybe the place is haunted. However, many have since called them into question, with skeptic Benjamin Radford purporting that Ed Warren told Ray Garten, author of the original book, to quote, make it up and make it scary. After Ed died in 2006, even more authors have reportedly come forward claiming he told them similar things about other cases. Nothing like the horrors of human duplicity ruining a mediocre movie. They say that God works in mysterious ways. They just don't always tell you how mysterious those ways can be. Consider yourself warned. Number 8. Snowtown. You wouldn't expect a brutal movie like Snowtown to leave out any horrific details, and you'd be mostly right. But there were longer-reaching ramifications of this particular murder spree that most don't discuss. It's a very dark tale, and the darkness of that tale is very attractive against the town called Snow. Though a majority of the bodies were found in Snowtown, Australia, only one of the 12 victims were actually killed there. However, that didn't stop the crime spree from being primarily known as the Snowtown Murders. At the time, it was just more of a spotlight on the town and, um, and on the gruesome facts of it all. But we probably didn't realize it was going to have a negative, such a negative impact on the town. After this all came to light in 1999, Snowtown did see a brief economic boost from morbidly fascinated tourists, but has since been, according to The Age newspaper, forever stigmatized. It got so bad that the town has even considered changing its name, but that has yet to occur. I would be perfectly happy for the memory of the bodies in the barrel to fade into the past, but I accept that we will never be rid of the stigma of it. Number seven, the Amityville Horror. Doesn't it seem kind of strange to buy this house, honey? Well, houses don't kill people. People kill people. Another haunting the Warrens investigated in real life, the Amityville case is perhaps the most famous, or should we say infamous, in history. No doubt thanks to the dozens of films in the franchise. Don't even look at it, Kathy. Let's get out of here. Though many know the Lutz family supposedly fled their Ocean Avenue home in 1976 for fear of their lives, almost as many also know that their claims have been widely disputed. So much so that the aftermath is probably more interesting than the hauntings themselves. After the publication of the book, a media frenzy erupted, with many calling the Lutzes frauds and the family filing multiple lawsuits in response. We'll forgive the 1979 movie for being so recent, but the 2005 remake really could have delved into this untold angle. Wipe that stupid look off your face and go to bed. Run. 
Number six, Scream. No, the Scream movies aren't based on real events, but they were originally inspired by one. Watch a few movies, take a few notes. <laughs> It was fun. In 1991, serial killer Danny Rowling was charged for five murders he committed the year before in Gainesville, Florida. Though Ghostface also kills five people in the first Scream movie, the way Rowling executed his crimes was far more heinous. Over the course of four days, Rowling forcibly entered the homes of his college-age victims while most of them were sleeping. He then carried out his wicked deeds, being far more brutal with his female victims than his male. Though every Scream movie features multiple survivors, sadly, none lived to tell the tale of Rowling, who was subsequently executed in 2006. Several more local teens are dead, bringing to an end the harrowing mystery of the mass killings that has terrified this peaceful community, like the plot of some scary movie. Number five, Backcountry. What, sorry, what? <gasps> and you know, we'd be lucky to see anything bigger than a chipmunk, right? Mm -hmm. In Backcountry, a couple's camping trip takes a turn for the perilous when they're stalked and attacked by a vicious black bear. <laughs> After her boyfriend Alex is eaten alive, Jen finds her way to their canoe and rows her way to help as the film ends. The movie stays mostly true to the real event that inspired it, but with some key differences. In Ontario, Canada in 2005, Mark Jordan was indeed able to ward off a bear as it mauled his wife, Jacqueline Perry. Jordan then got them on the river and found others, but Perry then succumbed to her injuries before she could receive proper medical attention. While the movie is more savage, imagine the heartbreak of being so close to being sufficiently rescued. Number four, the town that dreaded sundown. One of the first ever slasher movies, 1976's The Town That Dreaded Sundown, depicts the moonlight murders that took place in Texarkana in 1946. Though the assailant, dubbed the Phantom Killer, was never caught, much like in the film, the film does leave out a potential murder. Shortly after the last official murder, the body of Earl McSpadden was found after being struck by a train, only McSpadden was already dead beforehand, leading many to suspect that it was the Phantom's doing. Though the original town that dreaded sundown omitted this, its 2014 meta-sequel seemingly repurposes McSpadden into the character Hank McCready, whose grandson dons the phantom persona in an effort to make the town acknowledge his family's tragedy. One of you is Hank McCready's grandson. I am. <laughs> and now, thanks to you, you're gonna remember my granddad. <laughs> Number three, The Haunting of Sharon Tate. Do you think it's possible to alter the course of our fate? Or is our story just our book, written before we're even born? Almost everyone knows the tragedy that befell actress Sharon Tate. If not, they almost surely know the name Charles Manson. In August of 1969, followers of Manson arrived at Tate's home and proceeded to kill all of those inside, including the pregnant Tate. Though The Haunting of Sharon Tate shows the real murders in a nightmare sequence early on, the actual climax instead has the victims turn the tables on their oppressors. However, once everything is said and done, Sharon and company realize they didn't survive the attack, and what they experienced was simply an alternate reality of what could have been. I guess you could say I live in a fairy tale world, looking at everything through rose-colored glasses. I probably always will. Curiously enough, this wasn't the only 2019 movie to recontextualize the events, as Once Upon a Time in Hollywood did so to much greater effect. <laughs> Number 2. My Friend Dahmer My Friend Dahmer doesn't delve into the outright horror that serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer would become known for, but that doesn't mean it's not without its tenser moments. Sorry, man. My mom will just kill me if I don't get home for dinner on time, so... Just... Yeah, I'll see you on the flip side, Dahmer. Adapted from the graphic novel of the same name by John Durf Backdurf, the film recounts Durf's relationship with the young Jeffrey during their high school years. Sorry. Why'd you do that? I just wanted to see what its insights looked like. Throughout the film, a series of red flags regarding Jeffrey's behavior goes largely unnoticed. And the film ends with him picking up a hitchhiker named Stephen Hicks, who was Dahmer's first victim in real life. My name's Jeffrey. 
Stephen X, nice to meet you. Obviously, the film never purported to be about the murders, instead opting for a fascinating look at nascent psychopathy. Plus, there are other biopics that do get into the nitty-gritty of it all. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Exorcism of Emily Rose Don't ask it any questions or pay any attention to what it says. It? We won't be dealing with Emily tonight. <laughs> Part demonic possession movie, part courtroom drama, The Exorcism of Emily Rose tells the story of a college girl who dies sometime after a failed exorcism and the subsequent trial of the priest for negligent homicide. Though alleging to be about a real person named Emily Rose, the film actually took inspiration from the story of a German woman named Annalise Michel. And I am Lucifer, the devil in the flesh. Whereas Emily has a single exorcism performed on her in the movie, hence the singularity in its title, Michelle reportedly underwent a whopping 67 over the course of 10 months before succumbing to malnutrition. Did you encourage her to eat? Yes, every time I saw her, but the few times she tried, it seemed like, it seemed like she, she couldn't swallow or she couldn't keep it down. We can understand why the movie would want to streamline things, but truth really is stranger than fiction. The defense rests. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.